Greetings and salutations. I would like to welcome everybody back and some of you for the first time to the Full Sport Press Podcast, the premier sports podcast for the consummate sports fan. And this is your one-stop shop for all sports-related news and topics. I am Jay Ho. It's your boy, Big Jeff. It's your boy, Weezy. What's up, man? My man, Weezy, Weezy in the building. Say what's up, Weezy. What you got going, buddy? What's going on, man? Going Coach on? Locke back in the building. Say what's up, Cal? What's up? What's up, fellas? Everything good? Everything good, everybody? Yeah, yes, man. sir. This is yes. quarantined up, Coach. Quarantine. Hey, listen. Yeah. Another dang, another dollar. Yeah. Uh, Veggie Weezy, how you doing with your vegetables, Doc? Man, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, man. I, I'm, I'm staying consistent. Staying consistent. Yeah, it is. That's half the battle. Consistency is the key. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of consistency, episode 317, man, the people requested a deep dive on topics. So we're going through the hottest sports news of the past week. If it's freestyle. Damn right. Always. Yeah, always. <laughs> you better damn know it, man. <laughs> we going to figure it out one day. For sure. <laughs> um, best of the week, Jeff, what you got? Hey, we'll – Honest truth, though, in the, in the group chat, shout out to Weez, real inspiration to posting the miles he's doing every week. That's my best. The Weez getting the miles in every day. That's what's up, man. My, my guy doing this thing, I'm proud of him. That's what's uh, up. Slimming out, you know what I mean? You slimming his out. Face, mm-hmm. His face slimming out on his yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> Check you out. What you got, Weez? What's your best of the week, man? Man, my best of the week was I tried to move. I, I went three week, three days a week with no meat, man. I didn't eat no meat for three days this week. It was rough, but I did it. Look at I you, man. Congratulations, dog. You're I doing tell you, that's, good, man. Hey, I'm telling you, you on, you on the way, Weezy. You on the way. Sure. What you got, Locke? What's your best of the week? Um, Gabrielle Pierce, who's a college student who was graduated from Xavier University of Louisiana. She was not going to be able to walk like everybody else in college, as we know, where her dad turned the driveway into a commencement ceremony. He built the stage. He put the seats out there. He had a uh, ceremony feel real by including a procession, invocation, the national anthem, the welcome song, the commencement address. He made a actual program. He went all out so his daughter could actually walk across the stage like graduation. Shout out to dad, man. Shout out to dad, man. That's, that's what Weezy going to do. We was going to build a stage. He had to call coach to help him build the stage. So he's there. Like, yeah, yeah, right. We're we doing it. We're going to do it. We got you. Better sure. know it. My best of the week, man, sticking with school as well. The black valedictorian Nicholas Johnson, Canadian engineering major, has officially been named Princeton's first black valedictorian, the first one in the school's 274-year history. He said to begin his Ph.D. studies at MIT in the fall. So shout out to my guy, Nicholas Johnson, man. Changing the narrative for sure, man. Made my day right there. Worst of the week, Jeff, what you got? Uh, Holyfield Tyson 3 is allegedly going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't have many words. Um, I love the sport of boxing. I, I just hope they don't die. That's it. I hope they don't die. <laughs> Me too, That's all I got. Prayers <laughs> going up to especially Evander. Mike can yeah, make yeah. a couple, bro, but yeah. Yeah. Mike gonna make it out. That, that, that's what I was saying. Like I watched Mike video and the Vander video. Vander don't want that smoke. No. They, that, that's that's different. That, that's a different type of – Once Mike started talking about gods of war waking up and all that, like, see, that's a different individual. Dude. Evander, you know, I, I don't know. That's rough. That's going to be rough. Mm-hmm. What you got, Weezy? Worst of the week. My worst of the week, man. Uh, I'm going back to the group chat, man. You know, I try to, I try to, like, you know, I, you know I'm lusting for food right now, so I just try to, I post a, post a picture every day of some good food I would eat or something like that. And I got absolutely blasted yesterday on my milkshakes I put in the chat. <laughs> and I found out the uh, the people in the chat, man, they like they like McDonald's milkshakes, man. They don't want to venture out. They uh, people like McDonald's milkshakes. <laughs> those That's milkshakes that. look disgusting, though. I ain't gonna lie. Like I don't know what was going on in that picture. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a hey. It was a lot in that picture, man. Yeah, that's now, you that, know. That's the milkshake you get when you when you're out of town. You're just trying something different. They, that ain't one you go pick up on the way home. It's a difference. 
Okay. All right. So that's a specialty occasion milkshake. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, right. but you guys right. like strawberry milkshakes from McDonald's and Frosties and shit? You, you got to keep doing hey, it. I'm going to go on the record and say it definitely is not me to like McDonald's milkshake. Shout out to <laughs> Hop Dottie. Hop Dottie. Shout out to Hop Dottie. <laughs> Back, though. Coach, what you got, man? Worst of the week. Man, Shoe Palace. I hate Shoe Palace. Dang, I can't cool. stand Shoe Palace, man. For the people that don't know, Shoe Palace is a place to go get shoes. They are the worst site to try to get shoes. Oh, my God, it's terrible. You just get on there and they just keep taking you to the two-minute clock. Or sometimes it just says error, whichever one it feels like they day. I hate getting on Shoe Palace when shoes are released. It is the worst. That's funny, man. Now, people just trying to get these sneakers, man. They know it's rough as Shoe Palace for sure. Um, my worst of the week. <laughs> that was funny, Coach. You brought Shoe Palace. You put them on blast. My worst of the week is Channing Fry. He spoke out. Um, everybody is speaking out about the Michael Jordan documentary. And uh, he spoke out a turn on Michael Jordan, man. He said Jordan was just a score who couldn't translate in 2020. Nobody would want to play with him. And he finished by putting a, a – a bow on things and say LeBron is better than him right now. Mm. Mm-mm, Channing Fry. Now I get it. Some people say stuff just to get a reaction, but the vindiction that you saw in his face, he was 100% serious. And I uh, wish we still gave out the bum of the week because he's a bum for that. Yeah, I don't. To say it's not going to transition is, is I don't get it. If you think LeBron is better, that's fine. It's cool. I get that. Whatever. That's your opinion. Nothing wrong with that. But to say a man like Michael Jordan's game wouldn't transition when numerous people have come out and said that he would average 40 <laughs> in today's game, come on, man. Not a good idea, man. Not well thought out for sure. Um, stat of the week, fellas. Shout out to Bryce for another fine. Speaking of Michael Jordan, in 92 and 93, Dennis Rodman led the league in total rebounds despite playing in 19 fewer games than the second-place finisher, which was Shaquille O'Neal. He missed almost 25% of the season and still led the league in total rebounds, a complete animal on the boards. Shout out to Dennis Rodman. Shout out to Bryce for that fine, for sure. That's nuts. That's crazy. That's a lot of rebounds. Nah, listen, <laughs> Dennis Rodman had a knack of getting towards the rebounds, getting towards the um, offensive glass. People don't crash the boards like that other than maybe Andre Drummond. In 2020, maybe Ruby go Rudy Gobert, but Dennis Rodman was different because he's doing it. Those guys, seven feet guys, this guy's doing it six eight. You know what? If Dennis Rodman was, if he was a likable guy right now, that like this documentary would help him out a whole lot more than it would hurt him. You know what I'm saying? People respect his game a whole lot more if he was sociable. Yeah, let's just say that he's a different human being now. Yeah, he's weird. He's different, right? He definitely is. And make sure you check us out on iTunes, Facebook, IG, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, Beyond Pod, YouTube, and, of course, the SoundCloud page. The catch up on the past episodes of FSP. How do you do that? Just search for Sport Press Podcast. After you do that, make sure you check out the On Deck TV Hip Hop Podcast with Animal Brown and Spike Blue. The latest show is up right now, the Luda versus Nelly versus matchup review. You guys check that out. Yes, sir, man. Let's give out our picks real quick, man. Who we got, man? Jeff, we'll start with you. My heart wants to say Nelly, but I don't see how he wins. It's Luda in the lane slide. <laughs> mm, what about I, you, I, Weezy? I, I'm I'm rooting hard for Nelly. I, I I'm a I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Nelly. I'm gonna go with Nelly. Go, man. I want to say Nelly, but for some reason, I just think he gonna. He's not going to pick the right songs or something. It's going to mess it up for him. Because I saw a list that had them side by side, and I was like, ooh, if Nelly do this right, he could pull it off. But I'm, I'm going to go with Luda in a close one, though. Like, everybody thinks it's going to be a, a wash. I don't think that all. I think whoever wins, which I think Luda's going to win, he's going to edge him out by, like, maybe two. Yeah, man. I got Nelly winning. Um, it's going to be a, a knockdown drag out. But I really think that Nelly has more – Kids that's going to work in this audience compared to uh, Ludacris doesn't have a fan base like Nelly. And in turn, I think we're going to show up uh, people around uh, the age that went to college and, and uh, drop their tail feathers and shake their tail feathers and 
did all type of things with their tail feathers. Hey, we're gonna show up for, for Nelly. I didn't. I would, you looking just like I shook my tail feather. I'm just saying. I was, I, and it was the question was coming. <laughs> no, no. You know Nelly has a bigger fan base than Luda, and I think that's gonna help him out for sure. Lu, Luda's in yeah. the biggest movie franchise ever. Are we sure that they got the <laughs> fan base? Though what we we're saying is fan base, and you know women show up to those versus battles and get it's it. True. Going. Yeah. The only yeah. thing, the only thing, Luda. Has over Nelly, I think all his, all his, all little singles are big radio hits. They had great videos to them, all that. Nelly didn't his video, you know what I'm saying? It just it wasn't the same. But now Nelly got hits though. He got to be strategic in his list though. He need to do like he need to do like Jante Austin did and study that list and you got to come out perfect. It could get spicy tonight too. Oh yeah, that's what I'm excited spicy tonight. about. Yeah, yeah. That's, yes, after the love fest last week, it could get it get spicy tonight. <laughs> it's definitely gonna get spicy tonight. Uh, speaking of spicy, fresher than your average podcast, man. Me and my dog Animal Brown, the self help fashion podcast, directly related to improving everyday fashion. We had another IG live pre show to unveil our YouTube exclusive. I can't leave home without it. Episode two that dropped Friday night, featuring your boy, man. Each week for the next. Uh, for next week, we only have three episodes, so this is the final a series finale or season finale. Excuse me. We'll unveil that new episode on YouTube.com as well. Just simply search YouTube.com/realveal. The link is located in the bio of the Fresher Than Your Average page. Where your kicks? Top responsible. That was a good episode last week. Well, last nah, appreciate it, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we I wish we had uh, a little bit more time to do a little bit more stuff. Um, I think we had too many things. I know I did. I still wanted to do five more things, but uh, it was fun. <laughs> I would love to do it again for sure, man. Shout out to how many, how many total did you have? I don't know, bro. It's I a wish, lot. Yeah, it's no. a lot. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'm talking about... <laughs> No, he had a backpack. He got. He didn't break his backpack with him. He got. A I backpack. know he had a lot there. I'm saying, what, what was the total that was on there? I, I watched it, but I had to keep the count. Yeah, I don't know, coach. It had to be ten, <laughs> maybe eleven. I don't know. It was a backpack full. I yeah, needed two more. I didn't even have my AirPods. You know, I. Man, hey. I brought this whole humidifier with him. <laughs> hey. Hey. And hey. all the oils. It's essential. It's, it's essential. Yeah. It's essential. It's essential, dog. We, we, we hit the road. He got to have that. You know what I'm hey, saying? Hey, I'm the bringing fresh, dog. You know what I'm saying? I keep it on me. You hear me? Oh, okay. He bought, his, he bought his socks, too. Good oh. socks. Yeah, ain't nothing like some good socks, dog. Hey, yeah. hey Weezy, watch yourself now. I'm watch just, yourself. I'm just, I'm just a fan of the show. I'm just a fan of the show. There it is. I did have my socks, though. That's funny, is it? Oh, uh, Jeff. <laughs> Yeah, seconds, dog. Oh, yeah. Let's start. So, the my bad. Last week was Money in the Bank. So, we got to who gets the W results. So, with the WWE Championship, we had Bron <laughs> Braun Strowman, the champion, versus Bray Wyatt, not the fiend. Jay Lock and myself had Braun. Weezy had Bray. Braun Strowman got the W. All right. Then next, we had Drew McIntyre, the champ, Universal Champ versus Seth Rollins. Lock and Jay had Self. Seth, myself and Weezy had Drew. Drew got the W. Um, Locke is the only person to pick the ladies' money in the bank, correct? He had Oscar. Um, so shout out to him. And none of us got the men's money in the bank, correct? Somehow my guy owed us more for Husky Nation. So no one gets the points for that. But it looks like a, a lock, a lock week though. Like like pulled it out on his yeah. <laughs> phone. <laughs> That's some shit. <laughs> but Oh, you know, we talked, we've kind of been teasing a, a little announcement the last couple of weeks. Um, shout out to my guy, Nick, FSP family. We are definitely going to be launching the 808 and Chair Shots Wrestling Podcast here in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have a day for you guys here coming up this coming up week. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with Nick, man. Nick's a big, big, big wrestling fan, and he reminded me of how much of a wrestling fan I used to be and how much I still am. So we're going to have that podcast out to you guys next couple of weeks. Yeah, you need your button, Joe. Do your sound, Jay. Do it. Me, 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 me. That's loud as hell, man. Shit. Uh, shout out to y'all, man. Excited to hear about it, man. Get that going for sure, man. We're going to miss 
those ten good wrestling seconds though, Joe. But we still gonna get those ten good wrestling seconds because mm-hmm. we're gonna talk about what's going on the show. For sure. Here you go. There it is, <laughs> man. Tweet us with questions throughout the week at Full Sport Press. Don't forget to comment. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the YouTube page, on the iTunes page. Please rate and subscribe. But more importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. To tell a friend. Tell a friend. To tell a friend. That the revolution will be podcasted. And before we get started, first have Wheezy. Do you have a yellow box of Cheerios award recipient for the listeners? I do. This week's award recipient is former uh, Buffalo Bill, former Philadelphia Eagle, former Kansas City Kansas City Chief. Chief. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, Shady McCoy. There it is for sure. Deshaun McCoy, man. He on April 26, twenty nineteen, he made a grave mistake after seeing Avengers Endgame. At a screening ahead of the movie's wider release, McCoy left the theater with his son and pulled out his phone to tweet about one of the most dramatic moments in the movie. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, I'm about to spoil the movie for you guys. Uh, When Tony Stark dies following Thanos' defeat, man, Tony Stark dies. Who the hell is Tony Stark, coach? Iron Man. There we go. All right. So this sent the world, clearly not me, (laughs) into a frenzy. McCoy went on a podcast and stated that he had not known just how serious Marvel fans took these movies, and he wouldn't have sent the tweet if he'd known that. He said, and I quote, I didn't know that people really got into them cartoons like that, end quote. Cartoons! (laughs) The Marvel fans are now back on his ass after a year of being in his tweets and his mentions for the last year. They are back saying cartoons. That's why you're not an NFL player right now. He is a free agent. Shady, just shut up, man. Just Please. shut up, dog. Just you shut should up. Just, you should just let it just con- die out quietly. Wasn't nobody talking about that. You see what I'm saying? You see that what I'm saying? My, that, that was my worst of the week when he did it. Like, I, I, I didn't understand it. I, it. He was my running back at the time. Got his ass out of Buffalo after that. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely got his ass out of Buffalo. How you sending that out, Weezy? Oh, uh, we're going to snail mail that. We snail mail that. Yeah. Just an idiot move. Just not. We're going to talk about some idiots, too. You guys ready to get started this first half? (laughs) Most definitely. (laughs) Let's do it. The first half is underway. First half, the hottest sports news of the past week, like we do each and every week here at the Full Sport Press Podcast. Before we get started, I am Jay Hope. It's your boy, Big Jeff. I'm Weezy. What it do? It's your man, Coach Lock. Coach, where can they find you at on social media, my brother? Man, everything's the same. Lock underscore the underscore great. That's T H A. I let me on Twitter and IG. So, what about you, Weezy? I'm FSP underscore Weezy, and I'm at How Weezy on Twitter. I let yeah, you me. are. Yeah, you are, brother. What about you, Jeff? I'm J Easley 84 across all social media platforms. Most definitely. And I'm J Hove on Instagram and Twitter. Have a conversation with me on Twitter. Please subscribe to the YouTube.com slash Full Sport Press YouTube site. Subscribe, man. Come on. Come one with us, man. You know, we got some stuff coming up the pipe. We got to do a giveaway. We got to talk about that, man. We got to get back on our conference call. We're going to start that next week for sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, more than anything, yeah, we got to get some more subscribers. So join the team, man. Full Sport Press on YouTube. Click All right. thumbs up. Click yeah. that thumbs up on that. We got to find a way to get our comments back going too, Jeff. We ain't got no comments. We can't leave comments yeah. on our page. I don't know how. I don't know what happened. We disabled that. No. Mm. Talk to the cameraman about that. We got to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Let's kick the first half off, man, with some NBA talk to celebrate the NBA's 74-year history. ESPN has decided to set the world on fire as usual in a pandemic by ranking the best 74 players in league history, combining both current and past players. Now, as expected, basketball fans are tearing apart the list from top to bottom, pick by pick. Number one on this list, spoiler alert, is Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Number two is LeBron James. Number three is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Number four is Bill Russell. And number five is Magic Johnson. How you guys feel about this list? Oh, uh, man. Top five is probably how I would have it. I, I think two would probably be four to me. But the top five is correct, though. No honor. So, Kobe Bryant or Shaq within that top five? They're top ten. Nine and ten. Kobe's nine, Shaq. 
Kareem I think, I think Shaq is top five. I really do. <laughs> you take the magic out? Yeah, you got it. Here's the thing. I, I had a conversation, y'all. Listen, and I talked to Locke about this. Oh, boy. Magic Johnson's mid, y'all. <laughs> Look I at everybody. You, I, I almost kicked no. you off the Zoom. Like, I almost Bro. kicked you off the beat right there. Like, I was Real, I was hovering over your day. Real quick, Jeff. Huh? Can see Magic in half court? Ma- yeah. I- I'll let you finish your point. But I got a counter. I got a counterpoint to that. I don't know everything yeah. you about to say. Magic Johnson in half court, super mid, super mid. All he was just—he was just taller than everybody that, that guarded him, bro. He was—he was being guarded by Isaiah Thomas. I know, Locke. That ain't his fault. What I'm saying is, you put Magic in 2020. You can't yeah. do that, though. You can't. No. You gotta by his era. You can't do that. What I'm saying is, a lot of the times we talk about Michael Jordan being transitioned in every era. Kobe Bryant transitioned in every era. LeBron James transitioned in every era. I don't think Le- that Magic Johnson looks like Magic Johnson in 2020. Dog. That's it. Dude. Wow. Magic played one through five, bro. One through five. One I bet you were going to Twitter and say that. So did Draymond <laughs> Green. Draymond Green played one through five at a low level, not magic level, not a champ, not a championship number one option, number one through five. Come on, dog. Magic, magic Johnson came. might be some mid. I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm. I'm saying John Stockton better than Magic Johnson. I'm done. Yeah. Let's move on, man. Please. No, no, we're not gonna move on. No, we're not. Hey, no, hey, Jay. Not. No, hey, for not. real, Jay. Like we, we're not gonna let this blast you. Come on, man. man. That's a five-time champion, like. He went to the finals more times than people have been in the league. He Word that was better than him. Oh, okay, now 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 we just got the trolls going. We on the trolls. Okay, we on the trolls. Right, there you go. Okay, all right. <laughs> we on the trolls. I, I see what you're doing there. I, my, <laughs> on my the trolls was like, oh, was, was <laughs> yeah, it over. It on me, there, I was like, ah, okay. Nah. On me, CP. I do it. On me, yeah, CP. Here we go. On, on, me, on me, CP, Stockton, Gary Payton, kid. All better than Magic Johnson. Oh, uh, yo, yo, Mitch is gonna be in shambles this week. Bring, bring them on. Oh, Mitch bring is them gonna on. be in shambles. If I hey, said man. something like Drake is better than uh, Nas or something like that, you wouldn't answer the phone for me for two days. Man. <laughs> you got a, you got a point. You got a point. You wouldn't answer if I say something like that, dude. And uh, Listen, let's, man. Talk, let's talk about Listen. this list, man. In the last four years, LeBron passed Kareem. He was sleeping on Kareem. I think Kareem would transition to any. Any air for sure. Yes, because okay. he has a shot that's unguardable. Um, but you can't block the shot. Unguardable. The yeah. biggest leap was Harden going from number ninety-seven to number thirty-two. That's yeah. nuts. AI went from forty-six to twenty-nine, and um, Carmelo Anthony, number fifty-nine in twenty sixteen, was off the list. Wow. That's insane. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. But I, I was insane. shocked. I was shocked that Shaq was tenth. And Kobe was ninth. I was. Um, I was actually surprised they already put LeBron at two. I figured they would have him top five. I didn't think they would put him at two yet. Uh, I figured they would at least wait till his career is about over to see what his chips look like to go on and try to get him way up there. I mean, I'm not arguing with it. You know, he's he, stacks he has now are crazy. Uh, but I was still surprised they had him at two. I figured they'd have him top five. Um, but you saying Magic Johnson is 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 ain't ain't nothing is I don't get that one. He would nah, be able to play. He's a top five point guard of all time, but Steph Curry better than him. <laughs> Man, ain't no way, Jay. Like there's just there's no way. Like there's there's no way. Boy, you can no. fight it. No. Fighting with Steph Curry, my goodness. Man, he, them the point guards you named are better than Steph Curry. You wanna do that? Ain't no way. You want to do that? What you got in You, you want you want to do that? Them, them, I don't point that to the Stockton, the Payton, and the, and the, and the kids and all. They better than Steph Curry. You want to do that? Me, Magic Johnson. Me, Johnson is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. This should have been your topic right here, but I'll take it. Um, talk about Duke, the Dukies, uh, and Zion. So lawyers represent for Zion Williamson, his former agent, excuse me, Gina Ford. Filed a document in Miami Dade Court last week. They requested him, him being Zion, 
answer several questions that could have some serious <laughs> implications about his eligibility while he was at Duke. The document asked Williams to confirm or deny if he received, if he and his family received payments or other benefits before and while going to Duke. And it also alleges Duke, Nike, and of course it did, because all three of those are, you know, in bed together, offered or say payments and benefits as part of an ongoing $100 million legal battle between Williams and Ford. Is this a bad thing for Duke or is this water under the bridge? Um, Duke had and has and had one of the best recruiting classes of the last five years. But I think this is going to scare Coach K into going back to his old ways. Coach K couldn't beat him, so he joined him. He started, you know, getting your one and done players. Um, he started, you know, with that team with uh, Jaleel Okafor, and then it transitioned all the way to Marvin Bagley's and Jabari Parker's, and Gary Trent Jr.'s, all the way to Zion and RJ. Um, he thrived in the high school to pro era that preceded the one and done rule. He only lost one committed player in that time, which was Sean Livingston to the NBA. I think he will be fine with this G League transition. But Mark, uh, I said Mark, Mike Krzyzewski is the is the white knight. There's nothing that will ever happen to him as long as he is alive. He will be fine. Duke will be fine. But I do think that he'll get out of the one and done system. I agree. Um... Somehow, some way, this is going to get swept under the bridge or the rug, whichever you want to say. Um, and if something does happen, you best believe Coach K will not be involved with it. Somebody else will take that fall, an assistant, uh, something like that, like we've seen with all the other college coaches. With Usually a black – excuse me, Coach, I didn't mean to cut you off. Usually a black coach will take the fall for that. My bad. I was, I, I was getting there. You already know I was about to go there. If you go and look – Look, look how long it took them to get Patino. They finally eventually got him, but he's now head coach again, our owner. But his assistant not doing nothing. Um, you just always have other people that take the fall. And with Coach K, they want to keep him as their clean coach. They don't want him to come out to be the one to say, okay, he had to go the route that everybody else is doing. So somehow, some way, he would come out of this squeaky clean they will say that he had no knowledge of Zion's parents and Zion being paid, anything like that. They would say they did it without his acknowledgement. It's it's already kind of set up for it because if as long as this is settled out of court and Zion doesn't have to testify, he never has to admit to doing it. So as long as he doesn't have to admit to it, what where's where's the case? You know what I mean? There's no case, so he's fine. I think uh, Zion. I think Zion needs to listen to. Listen, you need to listen to the young Jeezy. If you get jammed up, don't mention my name. Um, <laughs> and like you know, no face, no case, man. Zion's on the big and better things. It you know, let the people handle that. Supposed to handle that. That's what I think. I don't think Coach K will get his hands dirty like this again. Um, he lives a you know he's from he's a Navy person. Um, you know he just. That's this is not his thing to get down and have somebody saying that he's cheating. He had to get down here with the people that's cheating to contend because he was getting his ass whooped with uh, players like John Shire and uh, Kyle Singler. No, that wasn't enough. He had to get some of these players in, and in turn to do that, uh, he had to help out the best way that everybody else is doing. Ninety-seven percent of college basketball is doing so. Yeah, yeah, we're seeing Duke make one round, first round exits at the NCAA tournament, and that was enough. He that had to go that route. When that right. happened, he said, okay, I got to go follow suit. Yep. Well, speaking of sponsors, the NBA has a new one. The NBA, as we've known, has been used Spalding basketballs since 1983. Well, that's about to change. They are going to go with Wilson basketballs now. So for the first time since 1983, They'll be playing with Wilson's starting in the 2021 season. Now, part of the new deal, Wilson will provide the official game balls for the WNBA, the NBA G League, NBA 2K League, and Basketball Africa League. Now, while they will keep 
the same leather manufacturer for the NBA, for the basketball, the WNBA will continue to use a composite ball. Now, the ball will have the same eight panel configuration as the Spalding did, but it will be Wilson here. Now, the league will go to the NBPA, create an advisory board to collaborate with Wilson and players to come up with the best new ball. Because if you remember a few years back, Spalding tried to change the basketball. The players didn't like it. They said it was too slick. When their hands got wet, it wouldn't absorb the water. So they went back to what they would be using the last few years. But with this Wilson thing, I think they'll get it right this time because they're going to involve players in adjusting the new ball, changing how it's going to be. And me personally, I like Wilson. They had the evolution. They had the solution that actually would absorb water. What do you guys think? How is this going to go over with the NBA? Uh, I I hope it's right. Last time, last time they did this, it, it didn't get past the All Star break. Um, but I'm with Coach Lock on that. Wilson's pretty much a good ball. All, all colleges use it. Uh, the whole NCAA uses it. So I think I think Wilson. I think they know what they're doing. You lost Coach Locke's uh, Wilson solution, and uh, he was very he, upset with you about that. He, he was. Uh, he was highly upset. He was he, very yeah. upset. With you. It was brand new, is what he told me. And yeah. He, he needed he his ball. He left his ball. Right yeah, he all woke me up out of my sleep a couple of days, man. He needed to go. I needed to go get that ball. Yeah. So got- that was a hey, that was a brand new ball, man. That's a good <laughs> ball too. Somebody, somebody's enjoying that that Wilson right now today. Yeah, today for sure. Well, today, I don't know. Definitely today. Yeah, no, it might not today, but soon. <laughs> Prior it's to that, up. yeah, Wilson had the league's partnership for thirty-seven years, so that was basically the first official basketball in the NBA. They'll find a way, man, to get it right. Like Coach said, they're going to implement some new testing. Um, Wilson's are really good basketballs. I really like the Spartans, though, the new basketball that they had. Um, I got a, uh, a, a Warriors championship ball. Uh, started playing basketball again, fooling with Weezy and Parham and Sean Wash and tore my damn Achilles and some damn LeBrons. Mother, man, I still, I'm looking at that damn basketball right now. I ain't touched it since. A bastard. <laughs> um, I was, I was, okay. <laughs> no, nah, go ahead, go ahead, Jeff. Nah, I, I went, went in a dark place right there. You did, you did. I think we all, I think it's just nostalgia with me, like, having this fall. I think everybody in this chat had uh, hoop dreams at one point. So you would work on your left and lay it in the bed, shooting at the ceiling, work on your left, work on your right, and you had to spot it in your head just more to make it to the NBA. So it's going to be different, you know, with seeing the Wilson. But, you know, I, as long as it is always a sweat, it does everything you need to do. I, I think that's one of those things, water on the bridge, no matter what kind of body you have, as long as it does you need to do, you'll be fine. The newest um, spot in NBA balls, man, they're great basketballs, man. And Coach Locke told me not to play with that damn basketball told me to put that damn basketball up, not play with it. And what I do, went to go play with it and tore my damn Achilles. Um, before you. we get started, you, you definitely you. told me. You told that me. Ball, that ball was supposed to be in a plexi box, brand new, untouched. Didn't listen. Didn't listen. Tore my Achilles. Before we get started with halftime, man, let's talk college football. Talia Tagovailoa, a rising sophomore quarterback who was on Alabama's depth chart behind Tua. Yep, his big brother last year will transfer to Maryland. Now, Talia oh. was listed uh, as the backup on the team's depth chart behind Mac Jones in March. Paul Tyson and Bryce Young are the team's other quarterbacks. Now he joins the Terrapins, where he joins the depth chart. that includes Josh Jackson, Tyler Desu, and Coach Locke's guy, Lance LaGrange. Remember him from the uh, QB1 show? <laughs> How does Talia fit in? at the Maryland Terrapins. He, he in for a fight for playing time, I can tell you that much. <laughs> he, might, he might be in a, a, a harder fight in Maryland than he was in Alabama for playing time. Yeah, you the damn know. lie. Now he got Bryce Young. Nah, Bryce Young nah, is the quarterback nah. of the future Alabama dollar. It ain't happening. That's why his ass left. He didn't want to smoke. That's true, but that's one, you know, one uh, injury. You know, I hope it doesn't happen to the kid, of course. Away, and he's right there. But in Maryland, those guys – all those guys in the same position. Yeah. <laughs> they all want to be the player. Like, yeah. kids should have went to the land of the uh, rise of sunshine or something, go to sunshine or something like that. Can you imagine Talia going down to TSU and being around that? 
Go so crazy. <laughs> I don't know if he'd make it. I don't know if he'd make it. I'm, 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 I'm surprised he didn't go somewhere in Florida where he could be closer to him. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, too. That's the reason why he even went to Alabama, because it was easier for his parents to uh, transition because they didn't have to go and see him playing all the way at USC yeah. or somewhere, and he just stayed there. But he said plenty of times that he didn't want to be in the shadow of Tua, which is a huge shadow, man. You got a top five quarterback as an older brother, man. It would be easier on himself to go and start his own path, and I think that's what um, Tali is doing. I just don't like the situation that he's going into. I think it would have made a little bit more sense if he was, like Dweezy said, maybe UCF or uh, UFC, or not UFC, uh, Florida Atlantic, somewhere like that. Um, not necessarily going to Maryland. That's going to be tough. Or Florida Gators. We don't, need, we don't need him, dog. We got a quarterback. Yeah. We got two quarterback ones, actually. And what, yeah, what, I didn't... <laughs> what Coach Spurrier is say? you got two quarterbacks, you ain't got one. You ain't got one. I didn't understand it either because the weapons he was used to seeing in Alabama, he's not going to have in Maryland. And then you're playing in the Big Ten. So now you got to go compete with the Ohio States, the Penn States, the Michigan. the yeah Michigans, the Michigan States. So I don't see why he would go to a Maryland. I mean, I understand transferring, but I figured he would transfer somewhere where it would be set up for him to be successful to have some options to throw the ball to. I can't name a Maryland receiver. They had them, no coach. Now they remember they had DJ Moore two years ago. Now they didn't have yeah. receivers then. No, no. I said I can't name a Maryland receiver now. No, I understand what you're saying, but they <laughs> have wide receivers every year. They get wide receivers though. Well, he, he better hope. Yeah, is that Big Ten defense that you're talking about coming after his ass? Mm hmm. That's going to be rough on him for sure. He should have went to Vandy. We see. Y'all need Talia Tagovailoa would fit perfect at Vandy, wouldn't you say? Yeah, man, but you got to do the schoolwork. Schoolwork sucks at Vanderbilt. Yeah, that actually matters at Vanderbilt. It's schoolwork. Oh, man, they, 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 they've been all right. They got, a, they got a different campus with him. They sure do. They got a whole different campus. They send the football players. Let's just get out of here, man. You guys ready to get started with halftime? <laughs> do it. <laughs> We're at the midway point. Enjoy all of the halftime festivities. Halftime, in case you missed it, Ron Artest was not the first NBA star to change his name. A number of his predecessors, including Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that we mentioned in the first half, Hakeem Olajuwon, World Be Free, and Bison Daley did so. But as of Monday, he may be the only NBA player to change his name twice. Ron Artest is now Meta Ford Artest. That's right. He took his wife's last name. The former World Peace is married to Maya Ford. Uh, spoiler alert, he did not take his first wife, Kamisha. You remember Kamisha you'd always talk about? He didn't take her last name at all. The question I have for you guys, would you take your wife's maiden name if she was the only person that could keep the name alive? No. <laughs> I said it. No. I'm with you. Sorry. Jay Lona. <laughs> He it, it, look, look, Jeff. He already knew I was gonna say no too. He knew it. He already knew it, and that's okay. No, not doing it. I, I think it's a uh, collective no. Um, possibly a hell no, considering who you ask. It. That's definitely a collective no. It ain't Deal happening, back. Captain. It ain't happening, Captain. If it ain't my last name, we're done here. <laughs> Now, the question is, would you let your wife hyphenate her name? Ooh. We're in Toxicville now. Hey, okay. now. We're in Toxicville. We're in Toxicville now. Hey. Go ahead and do it. Hey. 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 Hey.
it got to be a reason, like a reason behind it. It ain't just going to be just because I want to do it. Only reason I would let my wife pop in because I had a daughter and I might not get another kid. Mm. And I might not have another boy. And if she gets married, her name is going to change from Weaves to something else. So I would like to keep that Weaves going. So I, I would let, that's only, the that's only exception I would give to that. This is because I got a daughter. That's it. See, that's a good reason. Yeah, that's that, what I'm that's, that, that's a thought out reason. But I'm sure. saying if, if they just say, I just want to hyphenate it. Nah. <laughs> Jeff on mute. Hey, you guys ready to get started with the second I'll say my piece. It's a no to the first question. It's a no to the second question. Like, what do you want me to do? Ain't nothing to say. There it is. We out. No, we know. We, we out of here. Let's move on to more topics. We out. The second half is underway. Second half, episode 317, man. The people requested deep dive on topics. Going through the hottest sports news of the past week here in the second half. Jeff, let's kick it off. All right, guys. So, the NFL decides they want to make some changes to my least favorite rule, the Rooney Rule. <laughs> so, real quick, <laughs> real quick, let's talk about what exactly the Rooney Rule is. We're gonna be here for a minute, guys. So, you know, gotta break this down all the way. The Rooney Rule is named after former Steelers owner Dan Rooney. If you didn't know, it was created in 2003, and it's supposed to ensure minority candidates receive equal opportunities when applying for head coaching jobs in the NFL or other office jobs, GMs, coaches, uh, position coaches, things like that. All right, so I know you're asking me, why is this one of your least favorite rules? Well, here's why. <laughs> and right now, the league has three minority coaches, I believe. So obviously this rule isn't Enforced. really doing it. Exactly. All right, so now they're making new incentives, the new, the new changes to the rules are being projected. Here's a new incentive. The league will remove the anti-tampering rule that keeps assistant coaches from interviewing for coordinator positions with another club. So it makes sense somebody like Eric the enemy from the Chargers or Byron Leftwich. Oh, not to mention, those are the only two minority uh, offensive coordinators in the NFL. We didn't talk about that. But spoiler that alert. Help, spoiler alert, right? So that will help those two gentlemen be able to interview for other positions while, they're, while their teams are making their, you know, presumptive long runs into the playoffs, right? That should help. And then also, if a team hires a minority head coach, it will move up to six spots in the third round of the NFL draft before the higher coach's second season with the team. Also under this proposal, the team will also jump up to 10 spots in the draft if they hire a, a minority general manager. And according to uh, other sources, if they propose the club does like a minority candidate as a quarterback coach or like a something like that, a position coach, they get a compensatory compensatory pick, my goodness, easy for me to say, at the end of the fourth round. If they keep that coach for longer than one season. So this is the Rooney Rule changes that they've thought about going forward. How much BS is this, guys? 100% BS. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just crazy. And it's, it's for Jeff, for uh, if you count Riverboat Ron. Right, you count Riverboat. Yeah. Right. He'd be one Hispanic. Um, but yeah, this is bull, man. I, nope, this this is not gonna work. This is not gonna pass because you, there's no way you're gonna tell me if you had a team that went one in whatever with the new group, with the new season when they eventually to go to the amount of games they play, which eventually go to 17. If they go one in 16, just because they have a minority culture, they're not gonna move them up. How they how would they move up for them because they already down and got the first or second pick? I just don't see them moving teams in drafts just because they have minority coaches. It's some bull. Here's the thing, man. I see that the league is just desperate for diversity and disappointed with the fact that the Rooney Rule isn't working. And I think this goes into the fact that why you hire your Jay-Zs and uh, your people to kind of help out, to kind of bring some type of normalcy to the league. It's going with an outside-the-box idea but the real problem lies in the pipeline that they have right now. The minority coaches in college football are lower in, than it is in the NBA. It's, what, 14 out of 130? That's 10%. So the best ticket at becoming an NFL head coach is like what Jeff mentioned, is being a coordinator. Here's the thing. Eric Bieniemy had the best offense the last two years with Pat Mahomes. He still didn't get a job. So in turn, man, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you are a black coach, 
and we have people hurting the black coach day to day with stuff like Tomlin saying he come out and paid a player to uh, Bounty, um, Muhammad. Uh, what James Harrison. Yeah, Muhammad James Sanu. Muhammad Sanu, yeah. So yeah. in turn with Ron Rivera being the only minority coach hired in 2020, it was five openings. Flores was the only hired coach in 2019. It was seven openings. You only have one, maybe two GMs. You have two GMs in the entire NFL, man. Eric B. Enemy should be a head coach. As much as we give all the praise to Big Red, Andy Reid, Eric B. Enemy has that offense looking like that because he is calling all of the plays. So, in turn, man, it took Eric B. Enemy. He thought about taking the Colorado job this year, y'all. And he should 100% be a head coach in the NFL. So this shit ain't going to work. Something has to work. They just got to find a way to get more coaches in college, more coaches in the NFL. I just don't see it happen. I, I, I just don't like the fact that right now, if you get a, if a black man, if a black man gets a head coaching job in the NFL, it's almost like, all right, we're doing this because we got to now. You know what I'm saying? Just, just do it without making the announcement. And make it link, make at least seem some kind of organic. You know what I'm saying? It just, it just seems like it's forced now. All right, we're doing this because we got to. We're gonna hire you. We're gonna give you one strike instead of three. And then you get, you know, we're gonna give you one year instead of two years. If you mess up this one year, you're gone. I just, just don't. It, it seems forced. More pressure on the, it. Just, it just seems forced. That's just me though. No, that's and the other great part. The, the other part of it is even when we we do have minority coaches they don't get the same time as other coaches do. If they have two bad seasons, they out of there. When you see other coaches that have three, four, five bad seasons or three or four average seasons, they just keep giving them chance after chance. But minority coaches, they have two seasons that's bad or average. They get them out of there. They don't even give them a chance to build it up enough to see if it's going to work. Or even better, Coach, they have, a, they have two or three bad seasons with one team get fired and get another job to do the same thing with the new team. And it's like you retread these same coaches all around the league to be mediocre in every different spot they come to. And it's like, like what are we going to, what are we doing? It's just like the girls in uh, celebrity hip hop, um, the world, man, it's the same 10 girls that everybody dates, man. Got to find a way to get some new blood in there for sure. Yeah, they bad. <laughs> you, hey, that's high level podcasting right there, Jay. That's high level podcasting right there. Well, speaking of changes in votes, the NFL has not only had some changes they're thinking about doing, high school sports recently had a change that was shot down. The Basketball Rules Committee of the National Federation of State High School Association recently voted down a proposal that would establish a 35-second shot clock rule for boys and girls basketball across the country. The committee also turned down a proposal to allow state organizations such as the PIAA to adopt the shot clock if they wanted to. The National Federation established rules for all high school sports. Now, you would think with the NBA having a shot clock that's 24 seconds and the NCAA having a shot clock that's 30 seconds for men and women, that it wouldn't be a bad idea for high school to go this way so you could gradually get the students used to being able to play with a shot clock because you have times now where you see games going on where teams are hold the ball for entire quarters. You know, you won't actually see any games being played. Now, there were eight states that included Massachusetts, Maryland, Rhode Island, Washington, New York, California, North Dakota, and South Dakota that went ahead and used the shot clock on their own anyway. And now those states have been punished by the NFHS, well, they are not permitted to have membership to the NFHS committee when they discuss other rules. Good or bad that this vote did not pass for a shot clock for high school basketball? I think it's horrible. I think I think it's I think it should have passed. Uh it's 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 not developing it's not developing the, the game of the kids. It's not developing the, the strategy of the coaches. Who holds the ball for what what NBA team holds the ball for two minutes? Does that four corner shit? You know what I'm saying? What college does? It, it just it's not it's not it, it, it doesn't help nobody. It, it, if you want your kids to be good, you got to elevate them. So I, I've I've been wanting them to go to a shot clock. Even they do it they, they do it in AAU sometimes. I'm, 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 I'm gonna do it for girls anyway. So yeah, I 
think they should have. I think this rule should should be changed. I'll take I'll take the other side of that. Um, I'm definitely anti every kid gets a trophy. I'm anti that type of BS thinking. But I do think not having a shot clock helps the teams that run up against a buzzsaw. You know what I mean? So when you're up 20, up 30, you can kind of just hold the ball and not look up and you beat a team by 60. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I get it. Because in high school, the, the talent, especially like in certain areas, like urban areas, the talent disparity is huge. You have a, a kid that goes to one school that is a three-star, four-star kid that plays AAU and gets some of the best talent in the world, that he's playing against schools that have kids that will never play organized basketball once they graduate high school. Let's just be honest. And probably shouldn't be playing organized basketball anyway because they're playing for a school that doesn't have any talent. So having that shot clock, not having that shot clock allows a coach for the more talented team to say, all right, coach, we're going to spare you all tonight. We're not going to run this clock up. You know, that's just me. And I, I've seen it implemented a lot. That's a great point, Jeff. Um, looking at the disparity between basketball teams, but American basketball at any age is the only venue not playing without a clock. It's ridiculous. We shouldn't be behind anyone in the American game. USA basketball is an American game. So um, I think all the ways you look at players moving on to collegiate levels, I know everybody's not playing collegiately, but they play with the shot clock. So why not implement that at the high school level? It's become a shot clock sport. I think high school sports have to follow suit to kind of keep up with things like we used to say, college basketball operates with a 30-second shot clock. NBA uses uh, 24, so it's the WNBA. And I just think that we are advancing our kids if we hold them back by doing four corners and freezing the game because that's not really coaching. It's more of a strategy thing, and I don't like the way that that's implemented. It slows the basketball games down. It's hard to watch high school sports, man, with that no shot clock. It's tough to watch in any level, even if it's really good basketball or really bad basketball, it makes you want to leave the gym. Now, the the, the one thing that would be hard to buy to it, if they did it past the rule, is you have to look at the financial aspect of it. If this was passed, now you have to worry about every high school in the country has to come up with the cost of equipment because you have the shot clock installed you got to have personnel to run the shot clock. You got to train a shot clock person that's going to run it. Then you have to find somebody that's going to consistently be able to be at every game to run that shot clock. Then you have to have the officials who have to adjust to being able to officiate with a shot clock because they're not used to that in high school. They just let the ball play. Now they have to pay attention to the shot clock going off, resetting the shot clock, making sure that it was reset the correct way if the ball hit the rim if the ball didn't hit the rim. So it's going to bring up a lot of different things, but they would eventually get used to it. And I, I'm one for the shot clock myself uh, because it keeps the game going. You know, a lot of times you have a game that you're just sitting there, basically. It's a, a real slow down game, and that's fine. It's time and place for that. Like, I don't think if they do do the shot clock, it should be 30 seconds. I think it should be a 45-second shot clock if they implement it in high school. That way you can still give them enough time to get the offense going because at the end of the day, they're still high school players. So it's going to take them a little longer. The quality of basketball across the board might not be the same IQ level. So you want to give them enough time where they're not having to rush down the court to get into that offense if they need to. I like that. I like that 45 second because it's like the NBA three point line is further, a little closer in high school and, and college. So in turn, that makes sense, man. Improvising. I like that coach. That's a real good point. Yeah, 45 seconds is cool, but do something, do something to, to help them evolve. Like, it's it's like it's plenty of coaches, high school coaches that want to be college coaches. You, you're not going to get there by running the four corners, four corners offense. You're not, you just, you got to be creative. You're not going to do it like that. Yeah, no, so I like that. 45 seconds, That's, you need to get that one, coach. Um, let's keep it in basketball. Georgetown basketball head coach Patrick Ewan. Ooh, it's had a tough eight month stretch as any coach in college hoops history. Ewing lost the final piece to his vaunted recruiting class. One player got suspended, another one transferred, and now his prize recruit, Mac McClung, announced his intention to enter the transfer portal. After a 5 and 13 year in the Big East, Ewing will enter this season with an uneven roster to say the least. There's a massive hole on the wing. 
He's lost eight players, five starters since he's been the coach of his alma mater. It's Pat Ewing in trouble. Yeah, seat is flaming. <laughs> Not yeah. in trouble. His seat is on <laughs> like you see his seat on fire from down the street. Like the the, uh, the higher ups are trying to figure out what's going on. Why we can't keep a player? Like you you yeah. this close to wondering if it's like a scandal or something is coming. Like why why is everybody leaving you, Coach? Or what are we doing? Like this is weird. Hey, you is out of there, man. Anytime you lose five starters in one year. It's, it's something going on more than not just winning games. You're not able to relate to the kids. That's what it sounded like to me. You know, Patrick Ewing is an older guy. He played under John Thompson where it was real structure and discipline. And he probably is coaching an old school style of way. And if that's how you want to coach, that's fine. But you have to be able to adjust to the kids these days. These kids, they don't, they're not, they not built like that. So if you in there with that old school style mentality of doing things, they gonna leave and go somewhere else where they don't where it's not as strict per se. And now, if any kid was thinking about going to Georgetown, like we've talked about in the past, they gonna reach out. Hey, why you leave Georgetown, man? What's going on? And if any kid says something like, "Man, coach, show him be tripping, man. He don't, he not, he not allowing us to do stuff. He's too strict. He's too old school. That's gonna kill your recruiting. And if you in college and you can't recruit, you're not gonna win. Done. Dead to me. What you got with? Man, uh, I think, yeah, like Coach said, he just – he's not relatable to the kids. And, for example, USC had the top maybe 25 recruiting class last year, which is not good for USC. Football. This year, they got younger – offense coordinator, all the coaches got younger. They, they got a top five class coming in this year. You got to get younger with these kids so, so these coaches can relate to them. If – I mean, if not get younger – at least be more relatable, more have some more tolerance with them. You know what I'm saying? Everything can be no. You, I mean, you can't. I mean, you, kids not gonna walk around these days without AirPods. That's just what they do. Oh. So you you gotta you gotta either adapt to them a little bit and make them respect you more, or you don't adapt to them and then you don't get them. You don't get the kids. Yeah, had in trouble, man. I mean, he had yeah. made the tournament with the Georgetown hasn't made the tournament in 2014, 2015. So in turn, they brought in Patrick Ewing to kind of put a spark into the actual program. And he is having a really tough time coaching at this level. I think he should maybe try the NBA where he's a little bit more respected. Kids are a little older. Kids know and heard of Pat Ewing, kind of respect what he has going on. And they will respect the fact that he is an NBA player. There's nothing worse, and I'm sure Coach can attest to this, nothing worse in college basketball than losing a locker room. You are forever dead if you lose a locker room, and the way that Pat Ewing has clearly lost this locker room, I don't see it coming back. He has some transfers coming in, but he played six walk-ons last year, dog. You can't play six walk-ons. How the hell do you find six walk-ons, dog? It, yeah. it, it's nothing worse in college than losing and not having fun. You know what I'm saying? Some colleges, like some colleges don't mind losing, but the players are having fun, so they're good. They'll come back. But if you lose and not having fun, your coach is an asshole, you got to change. Uh, we don't know about that. I don't know nobody that's cool with the losing. No. Nah, well, not, well, not well, not necessarily not losing, but being not being competitive. Like oh, say you got Florida State, uh, not Florida State, uh, just name yeah, a college where it's uh, not known for basketball. Yeah, just say let's say Michigan, Michigan. They went. I mean, Michigan football. They're they're not being the the great like they supposed to be, but they he ain't losing players because they still okay. keep it the time. They still relatable. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. They're still competitive too, though. But like like just make um Jay mentioned, you lose the locker room, you can cancel yeah. it. The only way you can get a locker room back if you lose the locker room is if you clean house. That's the only way. Because if you lose the locker room and you lose five players, you still got six, seven, eight players in there. that still you've lost. So the kids coming in, they're gonna start getting in their ears about what they can't do, what they you won't allow them to do, and then they're gonna start paying attention to that. And now you lost them. So uh -huh. you lose a locker room, you, you might as well go in and start from scratch. Where's well, scratch it? <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, but, hey, Joe. Uh -huh. They say we favorite to land Mac McClung, dog. Tar Heels, baby. Let's get him. That, that makes sense. He fish out, he fish out in the edges. What were <laughs> <laughs> you about to say? 
but no, it kind of picking back off what you said with Pat. You know, he they brought in the Georgetown. He was the whole, you know, hero coming back for, from the glory days. And then he, the re, I think the reason why you said he might adjust better to the NBA is because you look at somebody like Penny Hardaway in, in Memphis. The reason why Penny works in Memphis is because Penny was entrenched in high school basketball, youth basketball, AAU basketball, where they – to heck with him being an NBA player, the kids knew Penny. All right, with Pat, it's like my dad is saying Pat is cool. Like, if I'm a kid that's coming to school right now, my uncle is saying Pat is cool. My aunt might remember seeing this on the Knicks game against Jordan. It's like, yeah, but I don't remember, dude. He didn't come to one of my AU games. He wasn't, you know, he didn't have a squad or none of that. That means more to these kids than saying I used to play in the NBA and I was actually one of the greatest ever. I didn't see you. You wasn't you wasn't DeMarcus Cousins, you wasn't Anthony Davis, you wasn't, you know, Joel and B. You was back when they were playing slow basketball. They don't even, they don't even like basketball like that no more. Pat, hey, Pat better find a way, better call Mike. They better get some Jordan elevens or something. It's, they gotta figure it out because you lose <laughs> it five dog. Somebody going to LSU, this kid going to North Carolina, this kid going to USC, bro. You can't lose them like that, man. <laughs> Speaking of something, we got to find out something. Let's move on to the NFL. All right. Whew. DeAndre Baker, quarterback for the New York Giants. And I think he's a Giants guy. Quinn Dunbar, that's your guy, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. He's a Florida guy. He's a Florida guy. I'm, hey, just saying. He's a quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks right now. Both are wanted for their roles in an, in an alleged armed robbery during a house party on Wednesday night. Let that sink in. You're an NFL player. Wanted for an alleged arm. So Baker is wanted for four counts of armed robbery with a firearm and four counts of aggravated assault with a firearm. And James Guy Dunbar is wanted for four counts of armed robbery with a firearm. What happened on this Wednesday night? (laughs) Listen, man, I don't know what happened, but I know I've heard of situations like this. And, you know, you got your homeboy. They both from Florida, both from Miami, Florida. So they probably still hang out with some people that are still in Miami. You hanging with people and they see a guy that has a watch or some money that they flashing and it's not your homeboys, it's, you, it's people that's with you. So I think that they are around people that they shouldn't be around. And Quentin Dunbar, man, let me tell you something about Q, man. Q was a really good wide receiver in Florida. During or some one of our down years. Really, really good, though. Q goes to the NFL and plays DB. Never played DB in his life. He's a number one DB. The reason that they got rid of Josh Norman was because of Q. And because they were thinking, man, we can build somebody up. And, you know, Q Hill came in and did what he had to do to be that talented to play at a level. He's going to be a number two corner in Seattle. They traded for him. Um, Man, I hate that it happened like that. It's just a bad situation to put yourself in. But everybody on this Zoom call knows you've been in situations where people you look like, why am I around this person um, in situations like this, man? And I hate that for having a cue. Now, let me tell you something about DeAndre Baker. DeAndre Baker, different kid. That's all I'm going to say about DeAndre Baker. If you do some research on DeAndre Baker, he might have been in a situation where he was mm. probably in a different situation. but. Mm-hmm. You just research DeAndre Baker. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not going to speak on the situation too much because I don't know what's going on. And, you know what I'm saying? If you get jammed up, I don't want to mention my name. Uh, but, uh, you know what? I'm done with it. Y'all go ahead. <laughs> he said I'm done with it. Their attorney I, coach said that they have affidavits clearing them. So. Yeah, that's what the, the attorney say. But, mm-hmm. I hope so, man. I mean, it's it's like you said, man, you know, it, it comes a point and it's a fine line because fine line. these are people, these are people that you grew up with, that you probably stayed in contact with, that you continue to be friends with. You probably even reached out to them and told them, hey, man, you, you know, you got, you know, not going the right way. You need to kind of start doing things the right way. And they probably saying easy for you to say because you're not here anymore. You, you You've made it. You know, you don't have to worry about how your bills gonna get paid, things like that. So it's a fine line of telling your friends what they can and can't do and trying to separate yourself because you still wanna be there for the person that you grew up with. But at it comes a time at some point 
after you try to help someone, you got to kind of figure out a way to separate yourself and let them know it's nothing personal. But at some point, I have to look out for my best interest. And I don't want to spoil nothing for nobody that hasn't watched all of, all the of smoke with Penny Hardaway. But he kind of talks about this a little bit with his situation while he was growing up in Memphis and some things that happened to him. And I can go into detail because I don't want to spoil it for nobody. But he kind of went through that same situation. So it's a fine line when it comes to stuff like that, when it's, when it's close family or close fam- friends and things like that. Yep. And it's, that co- goes back to the old days that Jay-Z said, man, you work this hard. You think I work this hard to stay the same? Stay no. Same. Man, get the hell out of here. I'm just saying. Like, ahead, my man. Ra- it, 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 it's, 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 it's different, man. Rappers are different than athletes. But e- e- either way, when you – when you made it out, you make it out. Either you in or you out. You get out. Go. You still can come back and be cool. Hey, that's cool. But just, you're done. You get out the streets. Yeah, that's not true, though. We, it's hard for people to do that because if somebody that on your way to make it, they were around you the entire time, every step of the way, college, pros, and then you like, yeah, I'm a pro. I can't hang around you no more. What's the difference? What changed? No, you take, you take them with you. You, now, you, can't, you. you can't, they did, and that ain't they, uh, in a murder. I mean, not in a murder, but in an armed robbery situation. That's all now, they Cole, did. Because you, as a, you're a Seminole fan, um, are we noticing a trend here with the Gators? Oh, um, well, that's another they, great they, show <laughs> man, we have here. Full Sport Press, episode 370. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew we weren't going to get out of here without you adding to the list of people that flew. <laughs> Chris, listen, man. It's getting long. It's getting long over here. Hey, hey you about to have to roll, roll that list out in a minute. Have a scribe, coach. Okay, hey, man. Q Dunbar. Yeah. That one, what? That one, Urban Boy, was it? Urban recruited him. God, Urban. My ear. Hey, Urban's getting them out. Get them, boy. He was getting them out of here, boy. Oh, Carry the flaws, hey, bring them to get Florida Land. <laughs> bring them to Gainesville. <laughs> you think, listen, just listen to Deion, uh, DeAndre Baker, an interview or two. You'll see what I'm talking about. DeAndre Baker, a whole, hey, 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 DeAndre Baker from the second drive, 100%. Ah, <laughs> ah, okay, ah, yeah. Mm. Uh, the more. Uh, say no more. Say no more, 100%, man. DeAndre Baker went to Hillsborough. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> no, don't put it on the no, bro. Sure. No, no, listen. That's a different era right there. That's a breaking with Hills, bro. You do a little research. <laughs> what he's just saying, he don't know what you're talking about. He said, don't put him on Hills, bro. You know, I mean, shit, I went to Hills, bro. So in turn, <laughs> <laughs> think about think about all that talent that came through Hills, bro. And, yeah. 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 Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Get what they zone for, though, Joe. They zone, zone for Glen Cliff, though. They zone for Glen Cliff, 100%. That's another show in the books, man. Um, again, man, we just wanted to go through some of the hot topics. We're going to get to delve into a lot of those in detail. And a lot of these this week, man, had a lot of uh, layers, Jeff. <laughs> a lot of layers. A lot so of many layers. Sure. So um, don't forget, man, YouTube.com slash Full Sport Press. Subscribe. Giving that. Uh, I think we're going to do a hoodie giveaway soon, man, for our subscribers. So please stay tuned for that. I know it's a little hot outside, but we're giving away the hoodie season. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're going to be outside till it's hoodie season again anyway. So. <laughs> where, you, where you potting, Jeff? Where you potting, Jeff? The tweet us with questions throughout the week at Full Sport Press. Don't forget to comment. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the YouTube page, on the iTunes page. Please rate and subscribe. But more importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. To tell a friend. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Yeah. Camera's always on, brother. Weezy. Everything paid for, baby. You better know it. Coach Lock, the birthday boy, man. Yeah, get a drum or something, baby. Get a drum or something. Most definitely, man. The Revolution will be podcasted. We are out. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Thank you for listening to the Full Sport Press Podcast. And don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend.